All right, guys, I'm back in the saddle at home. I've been away for about four days of driving new Toyotas, reviewing the new 4Runner for you. So stay tuned for all the, all the good stuff coming. Uh, essentially next week, starting with Land Cruiser, Camry, um, Tacoma, Trail Hunter, that sort of thing. And then in, uh, all the way in June will be Crown Signia. But in the meantime, as I was about ready to edit those videos, Mazda came out with a new teaser. And we have our first uh, teaser look at the CX-80. Just to get you up to speed, the CX-80 is the three-row variant of the CX-60. And below, I have the CX-90 for you guys. Then the CX-90 is a three-row variant as well based on the same platform as the cx60 however the cx90 that we get in the united states is a little bit wider and longer than what you guys will have in europe australia everywhere else in the world you're getting the cx80 so cx80 is above three row crossover cx90 is below three row crossover in for the united states north american market now recently mazda just announced the cx70 that is the two row version of this vehicle and I mean that literally. They just took out the third row of the CX-90 and called it a day and changed the front end just a little bit. Okay, and I will be driving it um, in, I think, May. So make sure you subscribe for that. Uh, but here's here, I'm a little... I don't want to get too overboard, but I'm a little... Ooh, I'm like simmering right now. So if you just thought the CX-60 was just going to get a third row somehow magically stuffed in the back... That's not the case here. This vehicle is definitely going to be longer, the CX-70, oh, sorry, the CX-80 compared to the CX-60. It has a completely different roof line and window line. Notice how the window line on the CX-60 comes sloping downwards to give it that kind of coupe-like crossover effect. Here it stays relatively flat, and that window trim in the back is much wider. Uh, so thicker window bezel, I guess you could say, compared to the thin one here. The window is much bigger too. So it's more like a big square compared to this little triangle. And then the space between the window and the rear spoiler here is noticeable. Notice how much extra sheet metal you have between the window and the spoiler on the CX-60. There's maybe five inches or so of space between the edge of the bezel and the beginning of the, the window or the lift gate area. All right. So that tells me that the CX-80 will probably look the same up until like the B, sorry, yeah, the B pillar and the B pill backwards will be very unique to the CX-80 versus the CX-60. Why am I simmering? Well, it's because the CX-90 and the CX-70 is the exact same vehicle. And the problem is, is like it, it costs the same as the CX-90, the CX-70, except it doesn't have a third row of seats. Here, you're paying, you're gonna be paying a little bit more, but you're getting a completely more usable vehicle. All right. The problem also with the CX-70 in the US market, it's just so big. It doesn't need to be that big. It only has two rows of seats. And I get that you get tons of cargo space and that's its redeeming uh, value. And it's almost similar to a vehicle I just reviewed on the channel, the Defender 130 Outbound. Super long version of the Defender, but it only had two rows of seats. That's kind of what the CX-70 is. Now, we also have more teaser here. So let's see if there's any more I can find. Okay, it, goes, it keeps going around. It gives us a nice like pano, pano view here of the rear end. Now, you're going to have plug-in hybrids of this, the 2.5 liter plug-in hybrid, which will have, I think it's a 328 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque, if I remember right, 8-speed auto. Uh, I like how this window trim, so notice the window trim kind of just ends right behind the C pillar here. This trim seems to go all the way around and I like how it gives us a little chunkiness here at the bottom of this rear window. When I was editing, I also found this image here. This confirms paint matched wheel arches. That's something I don't believe the CX-70 even has in our market. Now, we also have silver roof rails. There have been two images, right? Let me show you this image. This image shows a right-hand side, and then we have a cap on the left-hand side. So to me, that means 100% means it is going to be available, not in all markets, but in some markets available with the plug-in hybrid, the two and a half liter that I already mentioned. Now, in this image, we can also see we have white seats, and there, that's the third row. So there are two seats in the back. There's going to be three seats in the middle. So it'll be a seven, six to seven seater, depending on how it's equipped. Now, this is the Artisan Red, too. Uh, I forgot to mention that the Artisan Red is on the CX-90. I don't know if it's going to be on the CX-70. 
And we have a better look at these rear tail lights. If I pull up the rear tail lights of uh, the CX60 here, uh, it looks the same. I don't, you know, if you sleuth hard, maybe you can see a badge down here. You can. You can see something down here, but the image quality is not good enough for me to figure out what's what's actually under underneath that. Um, but yeah, CX60 rear tail lights look identical to the CX70. They might not be, but that's Mazda styling right now. Almost everything looks really same, really really similar, but with slightly different uh, choices here now. Is the rear windshield wiper tucked up? I actually don't see it here. doesn't mean it's not there, but it could be tucked up and under. Uh, let me keep checking my images here to see uh, from this angle. I don't see windshield wiper here either, but it doesn't mean it's not there. It could just be the angles. But I'm almost going to put money on that the rear windshield wiper is going to be tucked up here, which I don't believe it is on the CX-70 or the CX-90. Yeah, here's CX-90 right here, and you can see that windshield wiper on the rear. And you would think you would start seeing it here on the CX-80, but it is, it's not. But again, stay tuned for the official release for the full design. We might get another teaser. Speaking of teasers, we do have a landing page for the CX-80. Um, we also have a countdown. Um, if we go back to the YouTube channel, it says April 18th, 12 p.m., CET. Uh, I that might be really early in the morning, which typically works for me. So stay tuned for my. I'll have a, a not hands-on reveal, but I will be able to talk about it on the channel. I'll probably make a, a dedicated video for the CX80, and maybe I'll be even more fuming <laughs> if I really like this design compared to our CX70. Here's the thing. This is my. This is my ordeal. I've already complained that the CX-70 is a two-row CX-90. 100% is. Why couldn't Mazda just bring this vehicle, the CX-80, and make it a two-row? It's going to be noticeably shorter than our huge three-row CX-90 here in the States. So why don't you just take out the third row and offer it here in the United States as a CX-70? This is a misstep for Mazda, in my opinion. And I'm not going to say the CX-70 is going to be a complete sales flop. Um, but I think if they had this vehicle as the CX-70 here in the United States without the third row, it would do way better. It's going to look different than the CX-90 and the CX-70 just doesn't. It's the same vehicle through and through. So it kind of reminds me of the marketing misdirection from Japanese companies that we've seen recently um, that, uh, for example, um, the Crown sedan that we have currently on the market it's not a liftback. If it was a liftback, it would be doing a lot better. And then also they just came out that landscape model and it, there's no word of it coming to the United States as a TRD model. And I let the chief designer uh, Shimizu, I think that's his name, Shimizu-san, he was there at the Toyota event for the Crown Signia this past week. So I just talked to him like two, two days ago, literally. And I said, hey, we want Crown Sport first and foremost. He knows that. I went to town on that. I'm like, we want the Crown badges. We don't want the Toyota badges. And we we don't necessarily like the market here. Just does not have any th any interest in the Crown sedan that we have. Not the real rear rear wheel drive Crown sedan that they have in Japan. That's different. Yeah, like I just feel like there's that disconnect between the Japanese designers and marketing and product planning compared to what the U.S. market wants and desires. I don't know. Maybe the CX-70 will be a smash hit, runaway hit, and I'll be here eating my words. But as of right now. This is a vehicle I want as a two row for the CX-70 instead of a decontented CX-90. All right. Hopefully I uh, didn't sound too bitter here. I'm still excited for the CX-70 because the CX-90 is really good, but it's just, it's, it's uh quizzical. Is that the right word? I just, I just have question marks on why, 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 uh, instead of this vehicle. Now that gosh, anyways, I got to shut myself off. Let me know what you guys think down below. Would you rather have a two row CX 80 that's a little bit shorter and a different design than the CX 90, or are you happy with the CX 70 as it is as a two row CX 90? I'll catch you guys soon. All right. With Mazda in, I think I'm, I'm probably going back to California. All Mazda stuff is typically out there. So I'll see you guys in May for the drive of the CX-70. And I'm probably going to gush over it because I typically love Mazda. So there you have it. But I have to I have to at least appear to be um, unbiased, right? And give you guys some 
negative feedback on Moz instead of just glow them to the moon and back. So hopefully this makes me sound a, maybe a little bit more credible. I got to I got to shut up. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.